I'm watching the Philosopher's Commentary on the Matrix movie. And uh, there's this pretty good clip in here. I want to share it with you guys. Let's check it out. We only know that we are somehow trapped or enslaved because there is some form of freedom that we can intuit. If there wasn't a freedom that was there in reality, we wouldn't know we were enslaved. So Morpheus is going to appeal to Neo's intuitive feeling that there's something freer, something fuller, something deeper, something more meaningful. And it has to be a reality or you couldn't feel enslaved. This is from Epictetus' Discourses. It's book four, discourse number one. It's all about freedom. And he says, who is free? You're free when you live as you wish. Describes a few other things. He says, Who wants to live in sorrow, fear, envy, and pity? No one. Who wants to go through life without knowing how to achieve this? How to achieve being free? No one. We, just like Neo, know that there is a better reality, a deeper reality, a more meaningful a more enjoyable reality. We all know that. We're all going for that. Um, that freedom is peace. That freedom is just being, not disliking anything. That's being at peace. When you don't dislike anything, you're at complete peace. That's freedom. It's freedom because the being trapped or enslaved, as he says, is living as you don't want to live. So imagine somebody who is enslaved. You're a prisoner. You don't want to be there. Or even if you're a slave who has to work. You, you don't want to be there. You're not living as you wish. I have an Epictetus clip where he, he says just that. A person is free who lives as they wish. So if you are upset, you're a slave. You're a slave because you don't want to be upset. You don't like being upset. You're a slave. What are you a slave to? If you want work to go a specific way and it doesn't go that way and you're upset, you're a slave. You're a slave in the you're a slave to your desire, your mind's desire. Your mind has a desire. And because that you want something, you have to kiss butt. You have to do what you need to do. Because you don't want to be unhappy. You think you want the pleasure from, you have a desire and your peace is disturbed until you satisfy or eliminate this desire, right? That motivates you to go get the thing that you want. Like you're disturbed. That seems so weird. I'm giving you like the technical. But you know how it is when you want something and you don't have it. Like you're like a little bit bummed. You're just like, I mean, yeah, you don't have to be depressed and like moping around. I'm not saying that, but like, you know, it, it's like a dark cloud over you. And you're thinking, you know, if I could just, you're subconsciously most of the time thinking if I could just get this, I would be, the cloud would be gone. The sun would be there. Excuse me. You want that. You want that sun back. So you're a slave to your mind's desire. The, slave, the mind is a slave to its own desire. It's just, it's all the mind. But the mind needs to learn that its own desires are enslaving it. So yeah, you, you might want to get the promotion at work. That's great. Then go for it. Work hard and see what you can do. 
if you don't get it, like it's not up to you to get it. They didn't like you. You're not good enough. You, another person won the job. Whatever the reason is, it wasn't up to you to get it. You could have done anything. You could have paid somebody $10,000. You still maybe not, you know, maybe they wouldn't have given it to you. So we never want to set our hearts on anything that's not in our control. So you go for the promotion. That's your preference. Like, oh yeah, I'm going to try to get this promotion. That would be cool. We would have this extra money. We could take an extra vacation. Those are all cool things. The trouble comes when we don't get what we want. Or we're not getting it as fast as we want, which is still not getting what we want. We don't like the feeling of not getting what we want. We don't like the feeling of dislike. We dislike that we don't have what we want. And you don't want to live like that. You don't want to experience the feeling of dislike. What is the feeling of dislike? Sadness, jealousy, envy. That's the same thing. Um, upset, irritation, anxiety. Those are all the things that we don't want. So when we experience those things, we are a slave. What are we a slave to? Not wanting to experience those things. So the desire thing works both ways, right? It's like, I want a piece of cake and I don't want to get bit by the snake. It's both desire. I desire not to get bit by the snake. So how do we become free? Another note I made here is that, you know, we do these things to get back to peace. Like I said, we got the cloud hanging over our head. So we, we buy stuff, we eat extra, we have sex, we do drugs, you know, all the, you know, you buy stuff, right? So it's like, oh, I'm going to buy the North Face. People will know. This is not everybody. Some people just, I guess, like the North Face. But in my mind, it seems like, a lot of people get the North Face because, okay, I got the Mercedes, I got the North Face. What else do I, well, I, yeah, I'm working on the big house, right? So we do all these things because we want something. What do we want? Well, maybe we want to feel like we made it, but we might also want social acceptance. We want, want the ad, adoration of our neighbors and our family. Adoration. Admiration. Admiration, but I do think adoration. I got to look that word up. So we want those things because we think, well, that's true. That is going to remove the cloud. The cloud is that you don't like the way it is now. You don't have the North Face. You don't like that. When you don't like something, the cloud is over you. You can't get the full sunlight. And you're a slave because you, you don't want that cloud there, right? So I'm still playing a lot with this desire stuff because it's weird. You know, it's like, it's almost like a chicken and egg and an egg problem. Does the desire come first or does the dissatisfaction? It seems like the mind goes through life and it files away what is good and bad. So somebody said, Hey, nice job today, Jason. I was, oh, I like that. I wanted uh, the appreciation. For whatever reason, my mind liked that interaction. Then it's like, give me more of that. You know, that dopamine hit. You get hooked on that sugar cookie. So your mind learns what is good and what is bad. I stub my toe. I learn. I mean, that hurts. I mean, that's that's more of a, physical thing. The story my mind tells about that is what causes me suffering. Who left it there? You shouldn't have left it there. All those things, right? So your mind categorizes. It's just, that's what it does. That's what the mind does. That's good. That's bad. I don't care about that. Get it out of here. You know, that's nothing to me. And then we want what Epictetus says this in Discourses 3.3. He says, 
the mind wants, the mind naturally wants what it sees as good. How does it know what's good? All of those judgments, all of those previous experiences that we've had. And then we says, we say, this is good. I don't like that. Oh, that's really nice. You know, so we put a value subconsciously. All this is just how the, the mind works. You're not really doing it. Our mind puts a value on certain things. If they're good, we want those things. If they're bad, we want to avoid those things. And if they're indifferent, we don't care. So to us, it looks true. This is a good thing. Every mind's going to gravitate what it sees as good. Which is fine. But those are preferences. You don't want to get attached to getting this thing. You know, it's like, oh, I, I got to get the promotion. I'm working so hard day and night. Like, this is what I've, my life is this. And you don't get it. You're going to be crushed. Like, you need to realize it wasn't up to you. Because of the laws of, law of cause and effect, Nancy got the promotion. Why? Because she's the boss's daughter or, you know, you showed up late that one time or you made a suggestion that the boss thought was rude. Whatever the circumstances are, it had to happen that way. That's why it's irrational to want it any other way. You're upset when you don't get what you want. So you're pursuing your goal. It's going great. Oh my God, how come that hasn't happened yet? What don't you like? You don't like that it hasn't happened yet. But it couldn't have happened. Look around. It didn't happen. Why? Because of all these circumstances. Because of the thoughts and the stories that my mind, um, the conclusions that my mind came up with based on everything I see as good and bad. Oh, it's bad to lie. Okay, so then I don't lie. You know, all that goes into the formula of what looks best in each moment. And we do what looks best in each moment. We have to. That's all you can do. You can't have two scenarios. Hmm, should I cut my hand off or should I not cut my hand off? You're always going to do what's best. That's an extreme example. It could be anything. You do what's best. You do what's most reasonable of a multiple of options. Your mind comes up with these reasons why you should do this. Well, no, you know what? If I get out at three, I can go. You know, you have all these rationalizations, these reasons. And then at the end of that, at some point, the mind is convinced. You know, it's played that tennis back and forth. It's all happening based on all of our experiences. And then it comes to a conclusion. And then you know, yeah, you know what? I'll leave at three. That'll give me plenty of time. All of that's happening, right? So it had to happen exactly the way it happened. And you, when you don't love life, when you're not getting what you want, it sucks. You're depressed. You're sad. You're angry. You're pissed off. And you're a slave. Why are you a slave? Because you don't want to live like that. You don't want to experience those things. You don't want the cloud hanging over you. But you do. Why? You didn't get what you wanted and you had your heart set on it. You were wrong. You want something and you can't have it. You want reality to be different than it is. And it's not. Here comes the cloud. You're a slave. What's the key? You don't really need to get rid of your desires. I mean, in a sense you do because a desire is an attachment to an outcome, right? You have unmet expectations. Here's the cloud. You don't have to get rid of that. You just have to understand that it couldn't be any other way. So it doesn't make sense not to like it. If I don't like it, the cloud comes over and I experience feelings that I don't like. That's the other thing too. I don't like that I'm in a funk. 
that just adds extra to it. So if you see you're in a funk, you're kind of depressed today, you're being an asshole. Understand that's just what the mind's doing. That's just based on the stories the mind is telling. Have compassion. Talk to yourself like you're a three-year-old. Yeah, holy crap. I am so irritated right now. Like, take a breath and it will happen on its own with the mind. You don't rush it. You just don't push it away. You don't resist it. What does that mean? You don't dislike it. You see that it's this way. It can't be any other way. You didn't get the promotion. You're upset. Take a look at it. Remind yourself. Wow. Look at the story my mind is telling me. It is bringing in the clouds, right? That's your alarm system. That wakes you up to say like, my God, I'm believing it should have been different than it was. How could it have been? I should have done it differently. You couldn't have because you're always doing what seems best. Okay, I'm doing what seems best, but I was wrong. Right. Your mind thought this was best. It's what seemed best. Every mind gravitates toward what it sees as good. How could you take the worst option? This is what looked best to you. That's it. You can be free, just like Neo in the Matrix. And you can see that you're in the Matrix, right? You get caught up and it's like, holy crap. I'm stuck in the matrix. I can see Jason is really having a problem. My mind is really struggling with this one. What is it that I'm attached to? What is it that I don't like? That dislike is my work. Epictetus says something about, don't act like you're a philosopher. I'm a philosopher. No, say that you're presenting your emancipation to your because you're enslaved or something like that. Like he's saying like, <laughs> he's saying you're enslaved. Don't act like you're all high and mighty. Like you're trying to get out of this crap. So just like Neo in the matrix, you can realize you can go through life and you do your job and you do what looks best and you go on vacations and you recycle. But when you get the clouds, that's when you take a look. Everything else is fine. Everything else is running. Everything else is perfect. The cloud says, this is not perfect. But everything in life is perfect. It's just not the way you want it, or it's not the way society wants it. But it's the way it has to be. Okay, I didn't want that to happen. What's the result of not wanting it to happen? You feel like shit. It's the situation is still the situation. That cloud is because your mind wanted it to be different. Your mind is confused that, oh, this is reality. It happened this way. I set my heart on it. I got attached to an outcome. I was stuck in the matrix. And you can unplug. And you keep doing that and you keep noticing and you keep getting a little bit more free and a little bit more free and a little bit more free.